Hi folks, welcome to chapter 8. We've got the uh, first grade broken down, we've got the stand out and we tipped it up on its side. A couple of small things we, um, I don't remember reading and I may well have missed it, but um, that the um, stand is bolted down to the pallet makes a lot of sense, um, but the first time we tried to scoot it we thought, no way is this thing that heavy, and then we took a quick peek and saw two bolts in the bottom. Um, and then, as the video mentions, there's a ton of stuff inside the three different doors of the stand. So we took all that stuff out, took the doors off, tipped up on its side, we put it on an old towel to try to keep it nice. And uh, let's see here, the next step is going to be to take, the, uh, take some lithium grease and grease up the wheels and the feet so that they'll be um, adjustable in the future otherwise these cast iron threads could be prone to rusting and they won't budge so uh, we'll do that and we'll be back but that's it for the first part of chapter 8. All right chapter 8 continued uh, we got the stand uh, the feet on with the lithium grease um, move the stand over to the approximate place you need about eight inches between the stand and the wall, which is allows for the Y-axis stepper motor. And the next step will be to uh, break down or cut down the pallet. Um, you need a sawzall for this. I didn't own one. I didn't really want to buy an expensive one, so pick this up at Harbor Freight for twenty-nine dollars with a twenty percent coupon um, off of that. So hard to argue with that. Yeah, it's probably a piece of junk, but it'll certainly work for now, and um, my guess is it'll, it'll work longer than I need it to. Um, the one thing I wanted to highlight, and this is the first thing that Tormach has done uh, that I think is a little unprofessional, is um, the video, or excuse me, the slideshow they show on their website um, of them using the engine hoist, uh, it shows the engine hoist legs straddling the stand which allows you to bring the engine hoist up with the mill hanging from it and lower it right on. Um, makes sense. Um, I've researched the Tormach for over a year. Um, I've seen one in person but obviously when you don't own one you don't always notice the nuances and I didn't notice that the photograph in that slideshow series was a standard stand, the basic stand, not the deluxe stand. I also think it's a little unprofessional or a little annoying because uh, as far as I can tell, all the folks on the forums and the, my friend that owns the Tormach buy the deluxe stand. It's not that much more money. It has a coolant pump built in. Uh, it's just a better stand. So it's a little frustrating that the engine hoist isn't going to work as smoothly as I thought it would. What you need to do is uh, crib up the feet uh, so that the two legs of the engine uh, hoist will slide all the way underneath it, allowing you to lower the mill down onto the four points. What you then have to do is somehow get the cribbing out from underneath it. A pallet jack might work for that. I don't have one, so uh, we've got to get creative. I may need to go rent a pallet jack or um, some other type of jack. We'll figure it out and let you know. Uh, next up is going to be to um, get that uh, saws all down.
real quick update. Um, sawzalling the um, right side off, a little harder than I thought. Um, it's, it's a good thing I have a sawzall because I don't know how you would otherwise do it. The tricky part is you've got to cut through uh, the sort of 4x4 four four equivalents. And uh, I kept a shot vac nearby to try to minimize the dust of getting up in the ball screws or making its way into the mill. Um, so it took me probably half an hour. Um, and so hopefully the other side is easier. The good news is that if you look under the stand, I think those plus a 2x4 will be enough height to get my engine hoist underneath it. I'll probably end up screwing the 2x4 into it just so that the, nothing slips around. That's all. Alright folks, continuing on. We're now working on getting the machine ready to hook up to the crane. Um, there are a few things you, we need to do. Uh, the first is figure out the proper table alignment position. It sounds like you're supposed to look at the pictures the Tormach provides, but also it's a little bit of a feedback process where you get it close and then when you lift up you may see how you're balanced. So um, the, the uh, x-axis alignment looks like this is pretty much correct. What's interesting is you need to be careful that you don't end up knocking into the z-axis stepper, but um, you come around here you can see what we need to do is move the table back in the Y position. The spindle needs to be roughly over uh, this area according to the photos. So what we do is we stick a piece of half inch aluminum uh, stock or steel or whatever you want in the um, already uncovered uh, in, the, um, in the joint here for the Y axis and um, we'll rotate that with a pair of uh, channel locks in order to move our y-axis back and then we'll hook up and uh, we'll be back.